Welcome to First United Methodist Church of Denton. We are grateful that you have joined us for worship today. We invite you to register your attendance with us using the form provided on the live streaming page on fumcdenton.com. If you are watching through Facebook Live, please wish everyone a good morning in the comments. If you're watching us on cable TV, we'd love to hear from you too. You can use the contact form on fumcdenton.com. Today, we continue our worship series on how to build a bridge. We are also celebrating All Saints Sunday, the day in the liturgical year where we honor the lives of those that have departed us this year. It is appropriate that we consider bridges that were built before us on the day that we honored the saints gone before. As we join together, hear this assurance. God has saved us and called us to a holy life not because of anything we have done, but because of God's own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time and was further revealed through the life, death, and resurrection of our Savior, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. In confidence and by the grace of God, let us worship together. Let us pray. Spirit of God, enlighten our hearts to the reality of divine presence in our midst. Let our worship be pleasing in your sight, so that our gathering is an experience of deep communion with you and one another. In the name of Jesus Christ, this is our prayer. Good morning, church family. Miss Susan Lee here. Today is a special day, a special celebration in the life of our church. It is All Saints Day, November the 1st. Today is the day that we remember those who have died, who have a special place in our hearts, those who have gone before us, those saints in our lives. In our church, we've been listening and studying about bridges in our lives. And when I was first asked to speak today about bridges, I immediately thought of one of my favorite cities in the world, Paris, France. Here is a map of Paris. You can see there's a river that runs almost kind of straight through, cuts Paris in half. And along that river, there are 37 bridges connecting the two sides of the city. But those aren't exactly the bridges that we're talking about right now. Not the bridges that we stand on to look over into the river or across into a canyon. Today, we're talking about the bridges we have in our lives, the bridges that those before us have built for us. 
Have you ever had someone say to you, you have the same hair as your mom? Yeah, Anna Marie hears that a lot. Or maybe you've had someone say, you laugh just like your dad. Perhaps someone has said to you, you have the same smile as your grandmother. Or maybe you've heard, oh, you have the same hands as your uncle. We often share some physical characteristics or actions and attitudes of our family. We also sometimes share names within our family. I share my name Lee with my great grandfather, Fred Lee Clark. I was born on his birthday, so I share his birthday and his name. And I gave that name to Alexander. He is Alexander Lee, so he also shares. It is a bridge within our family that we are connected with. Also, we can have those shared common attitudes and actions with some of our friends that we spend a lot of time with. You may laugh at the same jokes with some of your friends, or maybe you make the same silly faces at the same situations. Those laughs, those names, those hands and hair and smiles and silly faces, they are all bridges in our relationships. And those bridges sustain and build our relationships even until death parts us. In our scripture today, Paul is talking to Timothy and he talks to him about his grandmother and his mother and the faith that they had and that they've passed on to him. We have been passed on maybe actions or physical characteristics or names that build bridges within our families. And then we have those same bridges with our friends in our silly faces and in the laughing that we share. As you move through this week, think about those bridges. Think about those bridges that have been built for you by your family or those bridges that have been built for you by others in our world. Those bridges that give you opportunities. Take care of those bridges and add your own steps to them as we keep bridging across our world. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for the bridges that keep us connected to our families and our friends and to those who have gone before us, those great saints, those bridges of memories. Lord, we ask you to be with each and every one of us and to lift us up in this week as we look for bridges in our lives and start adding our own steps. We ask all of these things in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. Bye, church family. Happy All Saints Sunday. I'm Pastor Don Lee. I've had many saints in my life, a number in this church. Saints bless us by their love and their witness of faith. Surely there is at least one person in your life, past or present, who has been a bridge between you and God. Someone who has helped you span the divide and find a place of refuge and peace in God. A mentor, a friend, beloved grandparent or, or parent, a children's or youth director, a pastor, perhaps even your own child or grandchild. I've got one of those. You know what my three-year-old grandson taught me recently? You are never too old to have your boo-boos kissed. Today we are wrapping up the series, How to Build a Bridge, as we remember the saints in our lives who have built bridges that we benefit from today. Not only bridges to God, but also bridges between one another. Most bridges begin as nothing more than a response to a, a perceived need. In the words of math in the building and design of bridges, every bridge grows out of people's needs. A bridge builder is someone who sees a need and realizes that God has them there to do something about it. Our saints are seasoned bridge builders. They make it a practice to be open to the opportunities around them to span the distance between people and God and between peoples. Saints are connectors, healers, peacemakers who cultivate God's goodness in the world. And as Jesus has said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. That's Matthew 5, 9. 
In our scripture, the Apostle Paul reminds Timothy, a leader in the church, that the faith of his grandmother and mother now live in him, just as his mentor, Paul, has passed on to him a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. Now he says, set these gifts ablaze. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. 2 Timothy verse 3 through 7. How many of you know the song, Like a Bridge Over Troubled Waters? Show of hands. Okay, that doesn't tell me much. Written by Paul Simon, it was originally composed as a simple two-verse gospel hymn with a guitar accompaniment. It was inspired by lyrics from a southern gospel song, I'll be your bridge over deep water if you trust in my name. Simon's song puts it this way, when you're weary, feeling small, when tears are in your eyes, I will dry them all. I'm on your side, oh, when times get rough and friends just can't be found, like a bridge over troubled water, I will lay me down. I suspect for most of us, the saints of our lives have been a bridge over troubled waters. The people who have loved us, believed in us, and who because of their witness of faith, we are who we are today. The saints in our lives have taught us about the value of every human being, about the importance of forgiveness and the giving of grace, the best kind of bridge. They've modeled a love that embraces people with all their differences instead of writing people off because they think, vote, believe, live, or love differently. Our saints are a reminder that God has not abandoned us, they are a way we experience God's grace in our lives, drawing us closer to God and one another. I think that's a life-giving message, especially in these dark days of COVID-19. In a recent training event, a pastor wrote this comment in the chat section. COVID-19 accelerated everything in personal and communal lives. If there was a gap, now there is a measurable distance. If there was tension, there is now conflict. My response, what we really need here is a bridge. There's so much fear in our world right now. That's why I find Paul's words in our scripture so refreshing. He writes, God has not given us a, a spirit, a pneuma of dilea, translated fear or cowardice. Instead, he says, we've been given a pneuma, a spirit of dynamis agape, and so fran ismas, power, love, and self-discipline. God's spirit doesn't trade in fear. Dynamis is where we derive the word dynamo. Agape is the word Jesus uses to describe God's love for us. And so fran ismas is about exercising self-control, learning to tell yourself no at times so that you can say yes to God more often. Paul seems to be responding to a letter he received from Timothy detailing his struggles with his role of leadership in the church. Timothy was an early Christian evangelist who would later become the first Christian bishop of Ephesus, according to church tradition. There will always be fear mongers among us who try to scare us into letting them have say in our lives. Saints, on the other hand, live with faith, not fear, and their trust is not in human institutions, but in God. Our saints had the foresight to build bridges in the past so that we benefit from them today, and for that we need to be thankful. Their work provides a powerful blueprint for modern-day bridge builders as we follow in their footsteps. So let's talk about the qualities of a saint I want to read to you from a note given to me by the wife of my best friend and mentor, Reverend Jean Wisdom, who passed away a few months ago. 
Debbie writes, you have been a great blessing to Gene for three decades. He loved you greatly and he chose you above all others. I found her words deeply moving and I think they describe how someone becomes a saint in our lives. The saints of our lives are known for their great love, how they embody God's agape, self-giving love, and for prioritizing our relationship with them. And I pray that you and I too are learning how to love and to choose the people in our lives above all others. Our saints lift us up instead of bringing us down. They offer a different take on things, helping put things in perspective. The view from up here. One thing ab about most bridges, they provide quite a view, like the view from the highest bridge of the, in the US, the Royal Gorge Bridge. Most bridges, by the nature of their design, provide a downward view of the world. Bridges can help put things in perspective. When we feel overwhelmed or incapable of managing a conflict, bridges can help us see the big picture. Often the problems we are faced with are not as daunting as previously believed. With God's help, we can overcome the challenges we find ourselves faced with, especially when we exercise agape, dynamis, so Franz Ismas, love, power, and self-control. There's a song by Dave Barnes titled, Prayers of the Saints. The words go, talking about the prayers of the saints, they can do what most can't. God bends an ear just to hear what they say. Talking about the way they move makes them do the things that they do. Somewhere a saint is praying for you. Saints help keep us connected to God by praying for us. Verse three of our reading says, I'm grateful to God when I remember you constantly in my prayers day and night. Recently, I visited with one of our parents who asked I baptize her one-year-old daughter, Claire. We talked about the meaning of baptism, the vows, and how to help her daughter form a memory of her baptism. We also talked about godparents. Now, as United Methodists, we don't actively promote godparents since the whole church assumes this role in a baptized child's life. But if godparents are chosen, I lay out a couple of requirements. One is that they promise to pray every day for their godchild, and two, to share that you do this with this child. I pray for you every single day. There's something powerful about knowing there is someone who prays for you every day. It's a bridge that helps us cross through the struggles of life, knowing that someone is holding us up like a bridge over troubled waters. My daughter and three-year-old grandson, Orion, spent the night at our home recently while our son-in-law was traveling. After his bath, his mom brought Orion downstairs to say his prayers and to give us all a goodnight kiss. Together they prayed these words, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray my Lord my soul to keep. The angels guard me through the night and keep me safe till morning light. God bless mommy, God bless daddy, God bless Nene and Pops, amen. I instantly recognized this as the same prayer my wife and I prayed with Clary every night when she was a little girl. And I was deeply moved that Clary had adopted this same practice with her son. And when he got to the end of the prayer and Clary prayed, amen, little O responded, the end. The kid just oozes adorable. So here's my point. I believe we are all saints in someone's life, building bridges to God and others through our example and our words, and yes, our prayers. We lift them up instead of tearing them down. In so doing, we remind them that God has not abandoned them. We show them that they are loved greatly and chosen above all others. So, to quote Galatians 6, 9, let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Or to use our metaphor, let us keep building bridges to the future, for the end result will be that others will be able to cross them 
learning to love both God and neighbor as self. And finally, the gift of joy. When saints live into their true identity, the end result is the gift of joy. It says verse 4 of our scripture reading, I long to see you so that I may be filled with hara, joy. The thing about hara is that it's not dependent on what's happening in our lives for joy to be present. We can be in the midst of a global pandemic and still experience bouts of joy. You see, I think joy comes from a deeper place than happiness. Hara is the work of God's spirit within each of us. I've always liked the definition of joy as God's spirit dancing within us. So perhaps it is the music of the saints' lives, our saints, that invites us to join in the dance. As we break bread together and give thanks for the many saints of our lives, past and present, let us be filled with joy for the music of their lives. They have loved us greatly and chosen us above all others. For your homework, as you light a candle in honor of your saint, tell them what you are doing or will do with the example they've set for you. Next week, recovering the sacred. Pray with me. God, we give you thanks for the many saints of our lives. They have loved us and chosen us above all others. Help us to honor them by following their example and taking our place as saints in the lives of others. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. As scripture says, they will come from east and west, from north and south, at all times and places, to sit at the table and bask in God's eternal presence in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table, and our Savior invites those who trust in God to share in the feast which God has prepared. As we come to God's table, let us center our hearts in confession together. Our lives are full of mistakes and errors places where we follow self-generated idols instead of our God. We are not alien in these mistakes. All of those who have come before us also face temptation and sin. So let us come before God, just as generations of believers have done, and ask for God's forgiveness and grace. Let us confess together, beloved God, who was known to our mothers and fathers and to our spiritual forebears, have mercy on us. We do not always love as you would have us love. We do not always do as you would have us do. In our stubbornness, we turn from you when we should turn toward you. Hold us, dear one. Comfort us when we mourn the passing of friends and family and help us to know that they are rejoicing in your presence. We praise you for the grace you shower on us constantly forgiving our errors, especially the ones that we don't share with any but you. Hear now the silent fears and worries of our hearts. Friends, hear the good news. Like our ancestors, we often fail to follow God's ways, but we have hope in the ones who did, Jesus a man of a particular people in a particular time, taught through his words and deeds that God has already forgiven us. Thus, we and all who have come before us are rightly known as saints, the holy ones of God. Thanks be to God for God's mercy, grace, and love. Amen. We come to the time where we will normally collect our tithes and offerings. We thank you for your generous gifts. A reminder you can give online by visiting fumcdenton.com or by texting the number on your screen. As people of God's new creation, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me.
softly and tenderly love he has promised, promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned, his mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is a right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us he took the bread he gave thanks to you broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying eat from this all of you this is my body broken for you do this in remembrance of me when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. God, pour out your spirit on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes and his final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we name before you, on this All Saints Sunday. Barbara Bergen. Iris Ramey.
Phil Phillips. Clara Lynn Barnes. Marilyn Robb. Margaret Shornack. Molly Hull. Miles Anderson. Charles Mills. Laura Kinney. Benny Snyder. Thad McCullum. Rick Williams. Dick Parsons. Mary Feltz. Peggy Baskin. Ken Ingram. Bertha Sharp. Tim McGee. Kay Bynum. John Bryant. Carol Johnson. Dale Rogers. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And now, as beloved children of God, let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Alternative Gifts Fair is happening online this weekend, November 6th through the 8th. You'll have an opportunity to donate to our partner nonprofits as an alternative gift for your friends and families over the holidays. You'll receive a gift certificate that shows you donated on behalf of your loved one. There will be matching grants for many of these organizations so this will be an incredible opportunity to give back as we enter a season of gratitude. Next weekend, visit fumcdenton.com slash AGF for those alternative gifts. As we all know, Tuesday is election night, and we have been seeking together to be bridge builders during this time. And in that light, we are hosting an election night prayer vigil on Tuesday, November 3rd in the Ivy Garden. At 7 p.m., join us for an evening prayer service and come together to pray for our country, for reconciliation, and for peace. The night will continue with a come-and-go liturgy available until 9 p.m. Bring your mask, a chair or blanket, and an open heart for a night of prayer. And as always, if you'd like to learn more about who we are, please visit us online at fumcdenton.com beliefs. If you're interested in becoming a member, we invite you to visit fumcdenton.com 
slash membership. And now please join us for our closing song. Receive this blessing. We have worshiped and broken bread together while honoring the saints of our lives. They have loved us greatly and chosen us above all others. May we too become a bridge over troubled waters for those in our lives so that they may know God's great love for them in Jesus Christ. The end. <laughs>